To many of you, a rank like Diamond might feel unachievable, as if it's just impossible to rank up in Valorant, and the only players who actually can rank up are the people who were lucky enough to get placed in a higher rank, or the ones who have been playing the game since its release. At least, that's the impression that I got from the comments after doing my Road to Diamond series, where I solo queued to Diamond playing Astra only with comms muted. For some reason, proving that it's possible to rank up despite your teammates wasn't enough to prove to some people that you can rank up despite your teammates. So that's why starting today, we're going to be basing more of our content around our coaching sessions that we have over at Skillcapped. If you guys don't believe that it's possible when I rank up, maybe you'll believe it's possible when other players rank up. As always, remember that all of the coaching sessions will be up uploaded in full over at Skillcap for players to view and learn from, as well as every VOD review and Smurf commentary that we've ever recorded. Collectively, you should have hundreds of hours of educational matches from some of the best coaches in the game that will help you perfect your play, which if you ask me, sounds like a steal. So what are you waiting for? Go check out Skillcap and let's take a look at our player for today. The player we're going to be working with is Kochi. She's a Silver 2 player and has less than 100 hours of playtime in competitive. While 100 hours isn't that much in the grand scheme of things, it should be enough for us to work with her to figure out what improvements need to be made. The issue that you'll run into a lot of the times with lower ranked players is that they haven't even played the game enough to really understand the maps or the agents, which makes it a lot more difficult to make adjustments as we go. In this case though, Kochi should know the maps and the agents just fine, so we don't really need to worry about that as much. So let's start out with her agent pool. You'll notice that when we look at Kochi's agent pool, she plays a variety of different agents and different roles. And this is just her competitive agent pool. When we take a look at her unrated agent pool, you'll notice that it's even more variety. There is no right or wrong answer when it comes to what agents that you play. However, we like to recommend that players stick to around one or two agents while they're trying to climb. So this is the first thing that we're going to have to look into with Kochi. I was gonna say, I looked at your tracker and there are a few things that I noticed that kind of stuck out to me. I think sometimes with the stats, I mean, obviously you don't get a full picture, but it kind of gives you like some ideas. So I noticed you've played a lot of neon in unrated, but you didn't play any neon in competitive, which I find really weird. Yeah. It was the start, the very start from my play. I'm coming from COD, from Call of Duty in Apex. And I, I thought about I'm um, maybe a movement character, and then I started with Neon, but I didn't fail her. I, I basically ever just um, died, and I have had, had no idea about the game and what is the duelist doing. And Your Neon win rate, by the way, if you never checked, it was actually pretty good, even if it was just unrated. Uh, you had a 56% win rate, which is like pretty decent, honestly. I normally, um the way I do it, is I'll have like a main agent on pretty much every map so like depending on what map i'm playing on i'll always pick that agent um and i it kind of just switches between like one or two agents so right now it's astra and yoru depending on the map i'll just pick between the two i didn't find the agent i'm feeling the most comfortable with right now I'm mainly i'm playing fate and viper lately but i'm not feeling it really so i, I don't know i don't know which character so it just to that's fine. So Kochi mentions that she likes to play Fade and Viper right now, but she's playing Omen in this game. This kind of gives me the sense that she maybe is still feeling things out, which is totally okay. At the end of the day, you don't need to hard commit to two agents right away, but it is something that I think players should think about if they're looking to rank up. Also, just to address this, I know this isn't some crazy masterful advice that you've never heard before. I think that you'll find with just some minor adjustments, you can see a ton of improvement in your own play. At the end of the day, a rank like Diamond might seem unachievable, but it's really not. And if you apply some basic fundamentals and are a bit smarter with how you approach the game, you can definitely do it. Kochi doesn't need to make a decision on what agents to main right away. I know at the time of writing this that she's leaning more towards Killjoy, which I have no problem with. But the main focus is that you want to pick an agent that you enjoy playing because you're going to be playing them a lot. Enough prep work though, let's take a look at some actual gameplay. Let's watch this first round and you guys tell me what you think the biggest problem here was. If you were the coach here, what exactly would you comment on? Um, so yeah, you can come here. I might group up with the sky and just try to fight with her. It looks like they're probably gonna go B though. Oh, got a few there. Now just be careful for a drop here, because they might sneak up behind you. Oh, 
All right, short round here, but a lot of things that we could go into. We could talk about Kochi's pre-round positioning and how she probably wants to be a little bit more prepared for the round to start. We could talk about the smoke that she placed behind the enemies as they were pushing through a main, and it probably won't have much effect. We could talk about the miss jump on to dish. And we could talk about how she exposed herself to three different positions as the enemies were pushing her. But what I think is the most important part of this round, and the most valuable thing that we could comment on, was fighting enemies in long, narrow hallways. Now, unfortunately, the post-game commentary from this session got lost, but I can explain it quite simply for you guys here. Notice how when Kochi is peeking out into this hallway like this, she is instantly exposed to every single enemy who swings this angle. And because this is such a big hallway, when she dies, she's faced with essentially three enemies. This is really bad, and when the name of the game is isolating gunfights, this is possibly the worst way that you could try to isolate your gunfights. So what I recommend instead, is rather than setting yourself up in a position where you're standing directly in front of the hallway, instead, position yourself to the sides like the Yoru or Sky does after she dies. You'll notice that they stand off to the sides of the doorway, making it so enemies need to run up towards them. This way, anybody behind them isn't able to trade out the kill as easily, meaning that it is far more likely that they'll be able to get one kill and prepare for the next gunfight. On top of this, since you have two players doing this, you can set up a crossfire with your teammates, allowing for even more opportunity for kills. You'll notice though that the way Kochi does this, it's not really giving them any chance to set up a crossfire. So while, yeah, maybe her smoke at the start is useless, and yeah, maybe she should learn how to jump up onto Dish, at the end of the day, this is what got her killed, and should absolutely be the first thing that we focus on. We could overcomplicate things by commenting on every single little thing that she does wrong, but again, at the end of the day, just fix Fixing this problem is going to make her play infinitely better. Speaking of fixing things that will make your play infinitely better, I'm going to show you guys a clip that some of you are going to think looks pretty bad, and for others, it might just feel like normal gameplay. Where is my smoke? Try to use that off of your Sage's contact. So when Sage sees them, like in front of her, uh, that's when you'll rip it. Because then they'll be in the open, you know, rather than like all the way back there. She kind of has to jiggle a little bit though, because they could get close. Can you look when they are? When they are? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Honestly, perfect. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of a struggle here, but hey, a win is a win. There are some things that I included at the end of the round about blinding off your teammates contact, which I think is just incredibly important. Honestly, most of the advice I'm giving to you guys right here revolves around adapting to your teammates positionings and using them to your advantage. And although this is a cool trick that I'm trying to teach Kochi that could easily end up winning her rounds, it's not even the most important part of this round that I wanted to talk about. Because when you look at this clip, you'll notice that it took Kochi a really long time to even get her smokes down. Smokes are the most important part of playing any controller, and the more time that she spends in her shadow form placing smokes, the less time that she spends actually playing the game. The best part is though, these are things that you can practice. Take a look at the advice I give Kochi in a VOD review that we did the other day that was posted on the Skillcapped website. Notice that little like the hesitancy right there. I think that that's a problem, and it's been worse than this still, but like you want to make sure that you get this smoke out. It's just as fast as possible, right? Those three seconds that you send hovering are like three seconds you could be rotating over. If you need to place a smoke, um, I don't don't worry about making it perfect, right? You can just do something like that. And look, even though I didn't like, I didn't try to make it perfect, it still covers the whole doorway. It'll be okay. I mean, like it's it's protruding a little bit, which is like bad. But like, I mean, at the end of the day, this isn't gonna like lose us the round. It's better to have a smoke here than like nothing. And it's better that I'm doing something else, right? So just practice this in a custom game. Honestly, like, I know that it sounds like kind of annoying. You're gonna like sit there and you'll just be like dropping smokes and stuff like that. But in reality, this is something that'll help you a lot. If you're able to just like do this quickly on the fly, it'll save you so much time. You'll be a lot more active in the game. And um, it just overall, it'll be a great benefit for you um, because it seems like this is honestly one of your biggest issues is that you sit there and you spend a lot of time trying to like focus on placing like the perfect smoke when in reality, it's like, just, just place it and go. Uh, it really doesn't matter as much. The reason that I, I think that this is a problem is because notice your raise right here, right? When you're sitting here, like kind of walking around, not doing a lot. So think of it like first point of contact, your sage can take contact, your raise can take contact. You can't. You can't take contact with anybody right here. It's just not going to happen. Maybe somebody mid, but like, um, for basically the direction that you're focusing, it's not going to matter. So what you want to do is if you're going to place a smoke, you want to do it quickly and then get up with this raise to help her out because right now she's fighting and she needs help. 
Um, so it, I would say optimally, um, objective number one is help this raise, but objective number two is just get this smoke out as quickly as possible if you're going to do it, you know, because you took time doing it. And during that time that it took you to like, kind of just walk around to place the smoke, your race took a duel and your stage took a duel. Easily one of them could have lost either of those duels. Hopefully you guys get what I'm saying with this. Of course, it's a bit of a learning curve in game, but you can absolutely see how this sort of thing would be an issue. And considering you can practice it, it's incredibly fixable. Finally though, one of the last things I wanted to talk about from our coaching session was confidence. This may be something that gets players to roll their eyes, but in reality, confidence is so important, not only for your performance in Valorant, but also just your enjoyment in the game. You deserve to feel confident in yourself. Nobody ever wants to doubt themselves. Yuck gross. No, you want to feel like you can carry the team. You are the main character. Take a look at this discussion that I had with Kochi on the topic of confidence. I think that you have a lot of really good reasoning behind what you're doing. Um, I would like to see you with, do it with a little bit more confidence, though. I feel like you're like doubting yourself yeah. like in the moment. Yeah. You know? I'm struggling with confidence a lot. Your aim is like actually cracked. Like watching you aim, like your aim is good. You can easily climb. Yeah, you, you know, see I those shots? So trash. <laughs> Like these corrections are actually really good. You did this on four targets. <laughs> I, I, I kid you not. When you go over this blind, watch this. Here's one guy, you shoot him, you move to the next, you start spraying at the Reyna. Now you correct to another target perfectly. You headshot the guy pretty much. And now you're back under the brimstone, you headshot him. That was <laughs> like, that was actually clean. I really think you need to be a lot more confident in yourself. And, and you're gonna lose gunfights sometimes. Sometimes you're gonna lose every gunfight in a game. It's just gonna happen, right? Um, yeah. But it's kind of just like about recognizing that it's like, okay, well, it doesn't define you as a player, you know? As players, we tend to only think about our biggest whiffs and seem to forget all about the times that you were actually just good players. But at the end of the day, if you don't trust yourself, you're never going to have the confidence that you need to land these shots. Now, how much did one coaching session actually help? Well, looking at her tracker afterwards, it looks like Kochi actually went on to win 14 of her next 18 games. This caused her to immediately jump from silver two, nearly hitting gold two, creating a new peak for her by jumping nearly two full divisions. If you ask me, that is pretty good. So hey, if you want to hit your new peak, feel free to check out Skillcap. Also remember that all of the coaching sessions in full can be found over on the website where we cover all of this and more with Kochi and all of the other students that we've been working with in the last few weeks. Many players have the exact same issues as the one that we looked at today and just by seeing how they solve them you can likely help yourself improve as well not only are we the cheapest and only service on the market that actually looks at real gameplay but we're also the only service that uploads every single coaching session for you to view if you ask me that is a steal check out skill capture the link below and other than that we'd like to thank you all for watching and we'll catch you in the next one